Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. Uh, today we will be discussing about epidemiology of injuries. Injuries are now becoming a global public health problem. It affects many countries, but particularly the developing countries like Pakistan. So, learning objectives of our session are we will be discussing about, uh, we will define and differentiate between the terms accident and injury, discuss epidemiology of injuries, prevention and control of injuries, and application of head-on metrics as an injury prevention true tool. So, mostly the people uh, confuse accidents with injuries. Uh, and while both are two distinct concepts. Let's see. Accident is an unexpected, unplanned occurrence of an event which may involve injury. So it's not necessary that every accident results in injury. In way back in 1956, WHO defined accidents as un meditated event resulting in recognizable damage. They also defined as an occurrence in a sequence of events which usually results in unintended injury, death or property damage. So the main uh, keyword here is unexpected, unplanned, unpremeditated which usually produce unintended injury, death, or property damage. When we see, when we see it in contrast of injuries, uh, we will see that the injuries are the unintentional or intentional bodily lesions at the organic level, resulting from acute exposure to energy. At the organic level means at the structural level of the organ. This energy can be mechanical, thermal, electrical, chemical or radio, which interacts with the body in amounts or rates that exceed the threshold of physiological tolerance. In some cases, an injury results from an insufficiency of an, any of the vital elements. For example, while Droning or strangulation or freezing, the body is deprived of oxygen, so it results in injury. So it's not only the provision of energy, it's also the lack of energy. Right. And this was given by uh, Dr. Susan Baker, one of the uh, pioneer in injury research. And so uh, in, in, a, in a nutshell, we can say that the injuries and not accident. The accidents are random, by chance, fate, they are beyond control. Whereas uh, injuries, these are non-random, these are predictable, they are preventable, there is a pattern to it. Right. So, and how would you classify the different types of injuries? Mainly they are classified as uh, unintentional and intentional though there are a lot of other types of classifications as well unintentional injuries examples are road traffic injuries falls poisoning and intentional injuries include homicide suicide violence types of injuries uh, road traffic injuries falls poisoning burns and crushing breaking bruises Crushing, like in the stone crushing in the occupations of stone crushing, uh, marble making, marble making, and uh, chip breaking industries. Places of injuries can be the homes, the domestic injuries, roads, road traffic injuries, farms injuries, um, schools, school injuries in the schools, workplace injuries, or the occupational injuries. These are the different types of injuries. Now. Out of the different types of injuries that we have just uh, talked about, road traffic injuries, they occupy 
the chunk uh, about 30% of the root traffic injuries are 30% uh, uh, of the uh, total injuries uh, root traffic injuries uh, are they are comparable to the injuries caused by the war uh, 31 percent there's only one percent ahead of the road traffic accidents and uh, it, it can be say it can you can say that we have to work for the road traffic in accidents on war footing uh, so uh, since the major contributor to the injury deaths among all types of injury is road traffic accidents we will focus our uh, next uh, discussion on road traffic injuries so what is the road traffic injury the road traffic injuries are uh, the injuries due to any crash originating terminating or involving a vehicle partially or fully on a public highway this is easily self-explanatory but how do we measure the burden of injuries how do we measure the, how large is the problem of the injuries so uh, we have certain mat matrix for that they are the matrix in the mortality morbidity uh, and disability so the matrix related to the mortality these are the proportionate mortality rate this uh, proportionate mortality rate means the total number of deaths the number of deaths caused by road traffic injuries out of total deaths out of the number of total deaths per 100,000 population number of deaths per million population is clear that the, any person who was killed outright or who died within 30 days of 30 days as a result of injuries death rate per 1,000 registered vehicles per year age and sex specific mortality rates these specific mortality rates allows us to identify the subgroup which is more prone to the road traffic injuries and the different interventions for them number of injuries or fatalities as a ratio of number of vehicles per kilometer or passenger per kilometer so the number of vehicles per kilometer is the traffic density more dense the traffic more dense is the traffic the more chances of um, getting road traffic and injury and similarly the passengers per kilometers so if a vehicle uh, is carrying a num uh, uh, more number of passengers then there are more chances of getting injury so these were the mortality measures what about the morbidity measures so the morbidity measures are incidence the number of new cases of road traffic injuries uh, per 100,000 population prevalence the number of existing cases of uh, road traffic injuries per 100,000 populations it's also morbidity is also measured as a slight injury the injuries which are not required hospital admission and the serious injuries which required hospital admissions disability these are the dailies disability adjusted life years this is a very important uh, measure um, and uh, it was uh, uh, formulated in, uh, uh, in global burden of health global burden of disease report by world health organization and it shows that it it, it, it tells us about the uh, number of life year number of years lived with disability and uh, uh, in the further slides we will be discussing about the, the, how the on what uh, variables it's composed so the temporary or the permanent disability the temporary permanent disability is like a fracture and the person gets these uh, crutches and the, uh, the dressing and all these stuff and the permanent disability for example is the amputation of the limb so uh, what are the we have discussed the different 
uh, indicators for measuring the burden of uh, road traffic engines. What's the situation in our uh, what we call in the pool? So the road traffic injuries we have 1.35 million projected in uh, the global burden of disease study that uh, road traffic injuries will rise uh, to the rank to the rank of to third to the rank of three in 2020 and uh, uh, it's quite clear that uh, we are on the way. So, and this is the global burden. What about Pakistan? In Pakistan, we, if we look at the disease burden from injuries, so uh, on the right side, you can appreciate that there is the natural disasters, conflict and terrorism, poisoning, fire, and at the bottom, we have the road injuries. And the below at the x axis it shows the years, and on the y axis it shows the number of uh, events. So, uh, when you look from 1990, 2017, uh, a strip gets wider, the play strip gets wider, which is for the road traffic injuries. So, and the other strips green red yellow orange turquoise they all are smaller ones which shows the different types of injury so among all the injuries in pakistan the road traffic injuries are the one which contributes more to the disease burden now if we have a look at which age group is more uh, susceptible the RTIs in Pakistan, then again, it's the age group between the shallow one from nine, the horizontal axis again is from 1990 to 2017, and the percentage is uh, the number of percent of the people involved. So, the shallow strip it shows that it has increased from 1990 to 2017, so the 15 to 49 year old, they this is the age group which is more affected by the injuries. It's simplified here that the motor vehicle crashes from, uh, if we look, start the, the peak, if you look at the peak, then the peak is 15 to 24, 15 to 24 years of age. There's a peak. Now, uh, globally, if we divide the distribution of death among all types of diseases to male and female by male and female then we see that whether it is the unintentional injuries or the intentional injuries the males are more likely to die because of these injuries as compared to the females for unintentional injuries five percent male uh, sorry female 5% females die as compared to 8.1% and in intentional injuries 1.7% females die as compared to the 3.8 so the males die more from injuries as compared to the females what can be the consequences of injuries once a person gets injured then there are the direct consequences or the consequences which are purely to that individual and the indirect consequences of its impact on the society. The impact on individual is the loss of life, limb, uh, increased medical expenses, pain, suffering, lost wages and uh, the lost uh, for society, the lost productivity as the earning member of the society is not working. So, the increased costs, increased expenses. And another consequence of injury is DABIS or the disability adjusted life years. It's a composition of a combination of two uh, matrices years of life lost and years lived with disability. And one DALI, one DALI is equal to the one year of 
one healthy year of life lost. Now, talking about uh, injuries in Pakistan, and, uh, and mind you, the, this uh, I'm talking about all types of injuries in this slide, not only the poor traffic injuries. So, the high risk population, why the Pakistan is more prone to, why the population um, of Pakistan is more prone to injuries. We have a huge chunk of high risk population. This population includes children, women, bonded labor, workers in small businesses who are powerless, who are illiterate, who don't know their rights, children and bonded children, bonded labor, women working in the uh, brick brick lanes, uh, working in uh, carpet weaving industries, like working and like working in uh, sports industries, making footballs, handmade footballs, and workers in small businesses, like informal sector, they don't have any medical coverage, they, um, they don't have any um, um, safety precautions, safety measures, medical care, rehabilitation, this is quite inadequate in our setup, uh, particularly the free hospital trauma care. For the for a victim of road traffic injuries, motor vehicles, machines, chemical, they are unsafe, banned. We are still using uh, in certain industries chemicals and the machines which have been abandoned by uh, their manufacturers. Workplaces hazardous, no safety measures. Workplace and hazardous, for example, the people working in, say, shipyards or uh, ship breaking industries, they don't have any uh, personal protective equipment, no safety measures. The person working, uh, laborers working uh, in our homes, the work uh, or, uh, or building any or for any uh, building any home or house or they don't have any helmets uh, so these are certain things which makes us more prone this is an example of uh, a person uh, making um, I don't know what you call it brown sugar or good and uh, an extreme heat that person don't have any personal protective equipment uh, and God forbid if he gets fought into what he's making, then it will cause him severe injuries. And same is the uh, and same is the thing in uh, steel mills or in the furnaces. Uh, the people working in furnaces, uh, the people don't have any uh, the robust gears to protect them and their timing. For them, I mean, they should be located in for the short hours, but it's not like that. So, and uh, here we can also appreciate that a person is working. Uh, the farmer is spraying pesticides, but it's not wearing uh, the mask. It's not wearing the gloves or the whole uh, gear that he should wear. So these are the few. Things now we, 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 knew, we know about now. Uh, now we, since we know about all these things, what to do? So the prevention and control. So what is the difference between the prevention and control? The prevention is the actions aimed at eradicating, eliminating, or minimizing the impact of disease and disability, or if none of these is feasible, retarding the progress of disease and disability. Control is the ongoing programs aimed at reducing the incidence and or prevalence of the disease or condition. And here we are talking about, mind it, the road traffic injuries. So it's, let's focus on road traffic injuries. So in order to identify the, uh, prevent something, in order to prevent or control any incident or any disease, uh, we need to know about what are the risk factors. So, 
to the different risk factors for motor vehicle crashes. Basically, they operate in three domains, the environmental risk factors, human risk factors, and the vehicular risk factors. In environmental risk factors, we have road conditions. These road conditions means if the roads are not properly paved, if they are not uh, made of concrete, if there are any holes in the road, or if there are any speed breakers on the road, the traffic, uh, if the traffic is congested, or if there is a uh, mix of traffic going on, like the heavy traffic along with the light traffic, weather, the rainy weather, or the floods, such things or uh, can cause uh, motor vehicle crash. The human uh, includes the, the age. We have seen that the we have seen that age. Uh, young age group is more prone, males, young age group, males are more prone you know, with little experience and the person having under uh, uh, alcohol, under the influence of alcohol or fatigue like our long distance drug drivers, they use uh, drugs, drug of abuse, so uh, these are human elements and vehicular, vehicular risk factors include the failure and uh, the failure uh, like uh, the maintenance is not there, the brakes are not functioning properly, uh, design is the design of uh, the vehicle in uh, a few uh, months back we have uh, heard about uh, the CNG gas cylinder that exploded in a Suzuki van and that killed a lot of people. So that's with, this is uh, an example of uh, improper designing, speed, speed, uh, obviously, um, speed is a factor, the more the speed of a car, the more uh, vehicle, the more likely to get a damage. And uh, as a general principle, when we uh, talk of uh, prevention and control, there are the four E's, also known as four E's of injury prevention. Education, enhancement, enactment, engineering and economic incentives and penalties. So education, basically the education involves the traffic uh, the, uh, related training and the traffic understanding of the signs of traffic and enactment enforcement includes the laws and their implementation engineering measures engineering measures include the structural changes which are required to uh, influence the flow of the traffic and uh, pedestrians for example the subways and the, the overhead pedestrian bridges we have also you know, what to see the, the iron bars uh, between the two roads, uh, between the two roads in Shara Faisal and the other roads as well. So these uh, weaken the desire of the people to go and uh, go to the other road uh, improperly. So economic incentives and penalties. So this means uh, giving. Uh, monetary, giving monetary uh, incentive to uh, the traffic police or the traffic worker who performs good and penalties to those who are the chalan or the, uh, to those who are uh, not following the rules. Another very important uh, tool for prevention and control is the hedon matrix. This is basically the nine cells, and on the top of uh, on the top row, it's the human vehicle environment. It's just like the agent host environment, uh, epidemiological triad, 
and the pre event event and the post event so it's the combination of primary secondary and tertiary levels of prevention along with the agent post environment epidemiological trial now in humans if you look at the cell uh, human pre event is the driver vision mobile news experience event seat belt not used post event victims age general health status for uh, event the human cause is risk factor is the seat belt not used vehicle risk factor is no airbag in vehicle environment risk factor was presence of fixed objects near roadway post event human risk factors of the victims age general health status vehicle gas tank design flaw environment night rain presence of fixed objects near roadway sorry gas tank design flaw emergency response emergency response as i have talked earlier like uh, if a person gets injured then the first one hour is the golden hour during which that person should be carried to the hospital if he is carried to the hospital then the chances of that person dying from that uh, injury gets gets minimized right and now uh, uh, last five years the evidence based actions for road safety there are the policy measures law and enforcement and the infrastructure establish road safety department for injury surveillance so what is surveillance surveillance is basically in, in simpler term is the information for action and that information for action comes from data collection and analysis and all these stuff but this is a very key step which is required to gather information for uh, the information for the policy makers setting up of injury research groups so injury research groups they are essential in identifying the areas or i can uh, i would say in identifying the hot spots where most of the accidents are taking place so they can identify these are the areas where accidents are taking place and why the accidents are taking place who are the people mainly involved in those accidents and why these accidents are taking place and then they can intervene here they can also identify different interventions evaluate them and send them to the policy makers training of road safety professionals particularly particularly in basic life support is essential law and enforcement compulsory use of seat belts and airbags 30% reduction in death children to ride in back seat prohibition the control of alcohol drinking substance abuse and use of mobile while driving limiting a speed less than 50 km per hour on major roads by the city within the city and less than 30 km per hour in residential areas infrastructure traffic calming measures red light cameras separate lanes for slow and fast traffic no mixing of the small no mixing of the light traffic light vehicles or with the heavy vehicles safe walking and street crossing separate pedestrians from vehicles and uh, that's it thank you so much i wish you a safe journey of life